You know, we've previously in earlier lessons this month discussed several things that people believe concerning angels that are not true. At that time, I purposely left out what we believe to be the number one false belief about angels. The number one false belief about angels is that Satan is a fallen angel. Is that true? Is Satan a fallen angel? Let's look at some points of this false belief. There is several statements that uh, come about. One, that Satan is a fallen angel, that he was cast out of heaven. That brings the question, where did Satan come from? Is he actually a fallen angel? Was he at one time an angel in heaven? Is he a fallen angel or is he not? Has he always been? Was he eternal? Is he eternal? You know, the dual problem of sin and Satan has long been a discussion for the philosophers and the theologians alike. All seem to think they have the answer. You know, when a person thinks of sin, his mind automatically goes to the garden where sin first entered humanity. However, sin's origin was not there but to, to a prior time. Well, if you believe that statement, that's another false statement, isn't it? Sin's origin traces back not to man but angels. It began not on earth but in heaven. That's another false statement. It's generally accepted that Satan was once an angel who, because of rebellion, was cast out of heaven. That also is a false statement. We get such ideas from the study of angels and how Lindsay and all the books that he wrote. He believes that Satan was heaven's choir director. Do angels sing? Didn't we just talk about that false statement? Few people realize the profound part that angelic forces play in human events. That's another false statement, isn't it? We have numerous false statements here that we're going to be looking at. This Satan, this devil, was once called Lucifer, the son of the morning. You can find that in numerous places, in numerous writings by men. Along with Michael, he may have been one of two archangels, but he was cast from heaven with his rebel forces. Could that be a true statement? No, it's not. It is not. The greatest catastrophe in history, in the history of the universe, the creation of Lucifer's defiance of God and the consequent fall of perhaps one-third of the angels who joined in his wickedness. That's a false statement of misinterpretation of the Word of God. All we can say positively is that Satan, who had fallen before he tempted Adam and Eve, was an agent of... Who? Who? So let's pick up this story where it began. It all started with this mysterious person called Lucifer. They say he was the most brilliant and most beautiful of all created beings in heaven. Is that true? No. He was probably the ruling prince of the universe under God against whom he rebelled and sinned. Is that true? Probably not. He began a war that's been raging in heaven from the moment he sinned and was brought to earth shortly after the dawn of human history. Another false statement. 
We have a lot of false statements here. You know, they want us to look at Isaiah 14, verses 12 through 14. They say it records the conflict's origin. So let's take a look at it. Let's read what Isaiah 14, 12 through 14 states. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mountain of the congregations on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Was there anything about an angel in that? Was there anything about Satan falling from heaven? How can that be? We'll investigate it further. They use Ezekiel 28 verses 12 through 17. They say it was prior to his rebellion. Lucifer, Lucifer as an angel of light is described in scintillating terms. So what does it say about him? It says, Son of man, Take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus saith the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, turquoise and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Created. You were anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. From the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore I cast you out as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You, you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. Who in the world is he talking about? Did he say anything about an angel being cast out of heaven? Nothing. Yet prior to his rebellion, Lucifer as an angel of light is described in scintillating terms here. Who are we talking about? We're talking about the king of Tyre, aren't we? This king thought he was better than everything else. Better than God, but God took care of him in his own way, in his own time. Isaiah applied the name Shining One or Lucifer to a king of Babylon. That's who Lucifer is, a king of Babylon. Not Satan. Not Satan at all. But he came to be thought of as an evil archangel who was hurled from heaven for his wickedness and in a revolt against God. You know, Christians gave the name to Satan because the church fathers identified the Lucifer, son of the morning, in Isaiah 14, 12 as Satan, who fell from heaven to hell. 
actually a reference to the king of Babylon. It was Satan who revolted against heaven in Revelation 12, verses 7 through 9. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceived the whole world, he was cast to earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 12, verses 7 through 9. Are we talking about Satan here? Could this be the case? You know, Lucifer was used in the Latin Vulgate Bible to translate the term morning star in Isaiah. That's where it came from, the morning star, Lucifer. The King James Version retained that word. And some scholars have interpreted the page, passages in Isaiah 14, 12 through 17 as referring to the fall of Satan because the Latin Vulgate made the morning star word Lucifer. Hmm. Perhaps one book that's contributed to the Lucifer theory as much as anything else in antiquity is the book Paradise Lost. It was written by John Milton in the mid-17th century. Actually, 1667. That was quite a while ago. That's how long this myth has been around. It is said of Milton that he regarded the war in heaven as both allegorical and historical. Well, how can it be both? Either it's historical or it's allegorical. It can't be both. It's further said that Milton was too much of a humanist to be content to treat the battle in heaven as a sheer allegory. He had to have something to hang his hat on, is what it amounted to. Actually, Milton did not even believe in Satan as a literal being. Thereby, he denies the word of God by not believing in it. But he believed in the existence of a historical author of evil, at least in the Augustian sense, that evil is a deprivation or negation of good, and evil is produced by pride. That's what he believed. The only way to portray Satan then was as a voice confessing and vaunting the proud will and the discovery that in his assault on heaven the speaker himself has created a hell within himself. So that's a twisted, convoluted scripture, huh? made in his own image. Further, it's said that Milton was a man anxious to minimize the miraculous elements that he found in Scripture. He chose not to believe them. He wanted to be an atheist. This idea was universally accepted. And to doubt it to make you think that it was a false doctrine, people would uh, classify you as a heretic or a nut if you actually believe something different than Lucifer is Satan. The history of the doctrine of Lucifer, Lucifer being Satan is one that just dates back several centuries, as we said earlier. It seems as if someone stumbled into Isaiah and Ezekiel and came upon this idea, and it's been accepted ever since. No one thought about it, no one researched it, no one wants to be concerned about it at all. 
Likewise, it appears that the same commentator concluded that Lucifer was Satan, and it has been doctrine to this day. Having already taken a quick look at uh, Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, where does the Bible say that Satan was a fallen angel? Nowhere. If the Bible says so, then it must be believed. But where does it say it? Could you find it anywhere? Could you find it in their sugar scriptures? It's not there. He is not a fallen angel. We've already noted that it doesn't say it in Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28. Neither does it say it in another one of their sugar scriptures. Luke 10 verse 18. Which is used to attempt to prove that. And he said to them, it's Jesus talking, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Hmm. Satan fell from heaven? Why don't we look at the other text that belongs with that, verses 17 through 20, instead of just the one sugar scripture. It does say that Satan fell from heaven. But nowhere in this text does it say anything about an angel falling from anywhere. The word angel is not even mentioned. It says Satan fell from heaven. There are various resources and references that refer to this statement. One person has said, as a flash of lightning out of heaven, quick and startling, so the victory of the 70 over the demons, the agent of Satan, forecast his downfall and Jesus in vision pictured it as a flash of lightning. Could that be right? While you were expelling the subordinates, I was beholding the earth's master's fall. Is that the way to interpret that verse? The Lord's, here were, Lord's words here were prophetic rather than descriptive of what had taken place or was taking place at that time. What was to take place or what was taking place? The phrase from heaven refers to the lightning and does not mean that he saw Satan fall from heaven, but that he fell as quick as lightning from heaven or from the clouds. It kind of blows them out of the water with those four statements. We're going to have to continue this later on, this evening. If you want to know what we know about Satan, you need to be here this evening. But the main thing we need to know is we must have belief in Jesus as the Son of God. John 8 verse 24. Therefore I say to you, you will die in your sins if you do not believe I am He. You will die in your sins. Once you realize it's your sin, you need to repent of it. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but He now commands all men everywhere to repent. Acts 17 verse 30. You, also, you must also confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, verse 9. must also be baptized into Christ for forgiveness of your sins. And Peter said unto them, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, verse 38. And then you must live patiently and faithfully enduringly until the day you're taken back. Revelation 2 verse 10b, Be faithful unto death and I will give you that crown of life. I want to offer you the opportunity to respond to the invitation while we stand and sing.
Jesus for the cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood?